Coach Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. Um, you guys have been here before, last year, this year again with Game 7s. What's a Game 7 all about? Got to get ready to play. Got to get ready to play at a high level, just like every other game. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's uh, win or go home. So it'll be, you know, it's an absolute blast to prepare for as a coach and play in as a player. It'll be a heck of a challenge playing a really good team with, uh, you know, obviously um, tremendous um, individual player um, and who put on a tremendous show tonight. Brad, you got Chris Mannix at the Yahoo. You got the quarter that you wanted in that first quarter, had a yeah. five-point lead. Where did it get away from you? In I that thought second our quarter? second quarter, um, we missed some opportunities, but I thought all, we also just got lax a little bit offensively. When we get lax offensively, we open up transition opportunities for them, and that's a problem. Um, and, then, and then, again, LeBron, I thought, um, lowered his head and drove the ball at that time. And, um, you know, we did a pretty good job towards the end of that quarter on him but he had already made a few layups, and then he gets to feeling good and hits those tougher shots. Um, I was proud of the way that we fought back, had a chance there um, to cut it to four on a shot. Um, it didn't quite go down, but um, this group's resilient. We'll be ready to go on Sunday. Dave McBenham and ESPN. Um, Brad, before the series began, I asked you about having LeBron in your path year after year, three out of the last four years, and you said it's really – Cavs versus Celtics, I don't look at it that way. But when he does something like he does tonight, 46 minutes and then the numbers, does that ever come into your mind that well, I'm really – this is a, a different type of animal that I'm coaching against? Does that ever come into our minds? Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> every time we watch, um, every time you're standing out there, every time you watch him on film, I mean, best player in the game. So um, special night tonight and special night in game four. Um, you know, yeah, I can't, I, I can't say enough good things about him. Mark Murphy, Boston Herald. Brad, uh, those last two threes by LeBron, just watching those. Uh, great defense by Tatum, great shots by LeBron. Hats off. Tremendous. I mean, I thought the, the second one wasn't quite as contested maybe as the first one. The first one was, that was ridiculous. Brian Rob, Boston Sports Journal. Brad, they uh, seem to really hurt you guys on the offensive glass there, especially at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Just what are the, you know, obviously they have a lot of weapons there for Nance Jr., but what, are the, what, was, what was the biggest I thought as there? we were coming back, that was the biggest issue, what was the glass, um, you know, other than obviously LeBron. But I think the, the idea, uh, I think we were all um, obviously consumed with our help, and we didn't either rotate and drop and block out, or we miss, just missed block outs individually, and um, they got easy tip-ins. Brad, Kenny Rhodes, WHBC. How did Kevin Love leaving the game with the injury affect you guys as far as your game plan or your, your defense? Maybe more on the other end. Um, you know, we, we, we would guard, obviously, a little bit differently um, with Kevin in the game. But, um, you know, obviously with the different matchups that they're playing and everything else, um, you know, when they, went, when they went small, I thought, you know, those guys all reacted very effectively. And uh, Jeff Green was great tonight. Um, and I thought, obviously, Corver came in and made some shots and did what he does. And George Hill was tremendous. Other guys picked up the slack for him being out. The other, sorry, the other night uh, you said best two out of three to go to the NBA Finals. Now it's, well, one game. What, what's your message going to be to your players other than that? Prepare well and have a great time. Enjoy it. Steve Ashburn, NBA.com. On a night like this, are you assuming that LeBron's going to go to the distance? And, and if, you, if you think he might sit out at any point, are you monitoring that closely to try to make hay? He, while he really his... only sits out usually end of first, end of third for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. There's an occasion where he'll sit out the start of a, the next quarter. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's playing 42 to 44 minutes anyways in this series now. You know, tonight I thought he would go 48. I think it ended up 46. Yeah. It would, would have been on pace to go 46-30 because he took – I think he was out for a minute and a half at the end of the third, and that's it before the subs at the very end. 
Coach John Schumann, NBA.com. You guys uh, went to Horford a lot in the post in the first quarter, and they doubled a lot. And Were you happy with the way you guys reacted to that? And did you feel like you went to Horford in the post enough after the first quarter? I thought, we, I thought that that was good at times in the first quarter, for sure. I thought our spacing was excellent, the way we moved it out of the double. I thought that the rest of the night when we posted, I didn't think we were as poised coming out of the double. Um, not necessarily Al, but just our whole – five-man alignment in general wasn't as good. Um, but, you know, when they're doubling, you've got to be ready to be a passer out of there, and Al's a very good passer. Brad, Chris Gasper, Boston Globe, just to sort of piggyback on that. It, it took Al a while to get going. He was scoreless at halftime. And you look at his home road splits here in the playoffs. At home, it's about 19 a game. On the road, it's about 12. Is there anything you guys can do to, to get him going earlier, particularly on the road? Not that that's an issue now with game seven at home, but just getting him going. Um, it just kind of depends on who you're playing against and how they're playing him. I mean, obviously, um, they're, they're, they're late switching, what we call veering, a lot of pick and rolls when he does set them with Thompson. Thompson's tremendous defensively, but one of the things that makes him tremendous is his ability to switch. George Hills into Al's legs and right on the catch or on the dribble they're going, um, so they're doubling him. If he's touching the ball and making plays out of the double, then his number of field goal attempts is going to be less. Um, you know, the question that John asked, did we go to him enough? Probably a good question and, you know, one that when we review it, we'll look at it and figure out if we need to do more. Brad Rajaski from ESPN 990. Um, talk about, if you would, for a moment, the kid from Cleveland that plays for you, uh, Terry Rozier. By how much has he exceeded uh, your hopes, your expectations, what you thought you saw in him in this postseason? Uh, tonight's game being maybe a, uh, you know, the first example of it. You know, I, I think that our job as coaches is not to set limits on players with our own ceilings we have for them. So he hasn't exceeded them at all. I think that we have high expectations for Terry, and we think he's going to be terrific, and he's just going to get better and better. Um, but we're not going to set ceilings on him. He's got, he's got a chance to be a very, very good player. Brad, Gary Walsh from Boston Globe. How did Jason Tatum make it out of that collision with Love? Do you think that affected him? And did you want him to be more aggressive we, early? Yeah, I mean, we, we were on that one, and our trainers were on that one in the huddle right after. Um, obviously, that was a, that was a, a nasty deal. Um, he felt fine. He'll be, you know, just like every other time, we'll continue to talk to him over the next 24 hours to make sure. Um, but every indication is he's fine. Um, but uh, I thought he was, I thought he was good in the second half. I didn't think we did a good enough job of getting his him as involved in the first.